Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Rudy Giuliani? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of Rudy Giuliani, then move to my analysis. Rudy Giuliani was born in Brooklyn, New York on May 28, 1944. He was the only child of Italian immigrants. His father, Harold, worked as an enforcer for the mafia, a plumber, and a bartender. Rudy attended Catholic school. He graduated from high school in 1961. He enrolled at Manhattan College, where he studied political science and philosophy. He graduated in 1965. He thought about becoming a priest, but abandoned that idea. He enrolled at New York University School of Law and graduated in 1968. After this, he worked as a law clerk. That same year, Rudy was married for the first time. He would be married two more times over the next several years, with his last divorce being in 2019. Also in 1968, Rudy volunteered for Robert F. Kennedy's presidential campaign, so Rudy started off as a Democrat. In 1975, Rudy changed his party affiliation to independent. He worked as an attorney in the Ford administration. In 1977, Rudy went to work for a private law firm in New York City. When Ronald Reagan was elected president, Rudy changed his party affiliation from independent to Republican. Rudy's mother would later say that her son was definitely not a Republican. He only became a Republican to get work. In 1981, Rudy was hired as the Associate Attorney General in the Reagan administration. This is the third highest position in the Department of Justice. In 1983, Rudy was demoted to U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York. Apparently, he wanted this demotion. It's still a high-profile position, and it sounds as though Rudy thought it would be a better starting position to run for public office. Rudy was successful in the position. He prosecuted a number of organized crime and drug distribution cases. It was during this time he was credited with promoting the idea of the perp walk into common use. This is a tactic where prosecutors embarrass people accused of crimes by parading them in front of the media. It doesn't matter that the people who are arrested are presumed innocent. Rudy was accused of charging a number of people with crimes that were later dismissed just in order to humiliate them with the perp walk. Rudy indicted 11 organized crime figures in 1985 and 1986. Among the people indicted were the heads of the five families of New York City. This was a major case for Rudy, and it boosted his career significantly. In 1989, when Rudy was still enjoying the fame from his recent successes, he ran for the mayor of New York City. He was technically running as a Republican, but his position was not really that conservative, Rudy was narrowly defeated. He ran again in 1999. This time he was successful, largely based on his tough-on-crime ideology. When Rudy took office in 1994, crime in New York City was out of control. Rudy easily won re-election in 1997. He remained mayor until 2001. Rudy Giuliani was the mayor of New York City during the attacks on 9-11. Initially, his response to the attacks was judged as exceptional. About 80% of New York City voters approved of his performance. He was often referred to as America's mayor. In December 2001, Time magazine named him Person of the Year. In February 2002, he was given an honorary knighthood by Queen Elizabeth II. Over time, history has not been as kind to Rudy Giuliani, because it was revealed that he actually made a number of mistakes, both before and after the attacks on 9-11. For example, Rudy decided to place the Office of Emergency Management headquarters in the World Trade Center, despite knowing that it was a target based on the truck bomb attack in 1993. After Rudy Giuliani left office, he started his own management consulting firm, despite not really having much experience in that area. In 2007, Rudy announced that he was going to run for President of the United States. He was the front-runner in the Republican primaries, but then ran into a number of problems. A business partner of his was indicted on 16 counts of corruption. Rudy was considered too liberal by many conservatives. 
and he had an affair with a woman who would eventually be his third wife. Rudy went back to working as a consultant after dropping out of the race. This was not a bad deal for him. He earned a lot of money as a consultant. His net worth was about $30 million at this time. Rudy was a major figure supporting Donald Trump's presidential campaign and supporting Trump after he was elected president. In 2018, Rudy joined Trump's legal team. After Joe Biden defeated Donald Trump in 2020, Rudy was put in charge of filing lawsuits regarding alleged voter fraud. By January 2021, Donald Trump's legal team had lost 63 lawsuits. At the time making this video, Rudy is being sued by Dominion Voting Systems for making false statements about them. On June 24, 2021, Rudy's New York law license was suspended. It was determined that he made demonstrably false and misleading statements to the courts, lawmakers, and the public when he promoted the myth of the stolen election. The next month, Rudy's Washington, D.C. license was suspended as well. At the time of making this video, Rudy Giuliani's career is in a free fall, as exemplified by his April 2022 appearance on The Mask Singer, where he was dressed up as a rooster. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one. Rudy Giuliani has always been politically ambitious. He made a series of calculated moves in order to give himself a chance of being elected to a high office. It's clear he wanted to be president of the United States, but the moves that he made to advance his career ended up destroying his credibility. If Rudy had only started out wealthy, he would have had a better chance of becoming president because he would not have had to take so many risks. As Rudy grew older, his desire for fame and power did not diminish. Some people have argued that Rudy changed over the years. For example, Rudy's third wife, who divorced him in 2019, said, quote, For a variety of reasons that I know of as a spouse and a nurse, he has become a different man. Unquote. I think one could argue that Rudy did not change. He was always power hungry. But now that his credibility has been destroyed, his pursuit of power stands out as awkward and inappropriate. Rudy, after the 9 11 attacks, is a lot different than Rudy in a rooster costume. Yet both versions of Rudy had the same level of ambition. I think it's fair to say that Rudy's chance of being elected president is the same as sneaking the sunrise past a rooster. Item number two, Rudy made a miscalculation when he ran for mayor of New York City if he believed it would help him in his political career outside of New York City. One might think that being the mayor of such a large city would facilitate a promising political career in the future, but it does not. New York City mayors typically do not perform well politically outside of New York City. For example, former New York City mayors John Lindsay, Michael Bloomberg, and Bill de Blasio unsuccessfully ran for president. Of course, Rudy shares this claim to fame. Item number three. Rudy Giuliani's tough-on-crime stance is now considered somewhat controversial. As I mentioned, when Rudy became the mayor of New York City, people were tired of all the crime. For example, 150,000 people a day were jumping subway turnstiles before Rudy was elected. Rudy's idea was to have the police aggressively enforce low-level offenses like panhandling, graffiti, possession of marijuana, public intoxication, and of course, jumping over turnstiles. The crime rate dropped in New York City during Rudy's time as mayor. It's not clear if his actions were really responsible. The rates were already dropping when he was elected. Rudy defended the police during a number of controversial incidents when it looked like the police were actually in the wrong. Rudy did not exercise good judgment much of the time. He actually seemed quite petty and close-minded. Item number four. In 1999, Rudy vetoed a bill legalizing the ownership of ferrets in New York City. He compared the rodents to tigers. I guess Rudy has a particular fear of tigers, given that he dresses up as a rooster. The editor of Modern Ferret magazine took exception to Rudy's position, which of course is shocking. Who would have thought that there's a magazine dedicated to ferrets? Is the word modern really necessary in the title? Is there also a magazine called Ancient Ferret? Either way, on a radio show, Rudy went on an extended rant against a person who was pro-ferret telling the man that his excessive concern with the little weasels was a sickness. 
Rudy told him that there was something wrong with his personality and that he needed a mental health clinician. I don't agree with Rudy giving out mental health advice, but Rudy was right about the ferrets. Experts have repeatedly stated that ferrets are not good pets and cannot be effectively vaccinated against rabies. Even still, comparing them to tigers is not reasonable, mostly because tigers have been known to kill people. There was one female tiger in the early 1900s that killed 436 people in Nepal and India. It was named the Champawat Tiger, not Chomp a lot, although technically that would also fit. This tiger is believed to have killed more people than any other single animal ever. Even a ferret wielding a machine gun would have trouble doing that, although that would certainly be a talented ferret. Item number five, as I mentioned, at one time Rudy Giuliani was exceedingly wealthy. These days he's not doing as well. Rudy ran into a number of financial difficulties like Donald Trump failing to pay him and, of course, the litigation regarding the voting machines. Rudy appears to be increasingly desperate to generate revenue. He sells health products, cigars, and collectible coins on a podcast. He is also on Cameo, where he charges $325 for a personalized video message and $975 for a live video call. Item number six. What do I think happened in the case of Rudy Giuliani? This is just a theory, my opinion. When Rudy started his career, he had ambitions of greatness. He had a number of early successes, like prosecuting notorious crime figures and being elected the mayor of New York City. Crime dramatically decreased when he was mayor. He delivered what he promised, and people were very happy with him. Rudy's performance after 9-11 elevated him to a position of even greater prominence. Now he was more than just a well-liked mayor. He was a hero to millions of people, someone who was going to help New York City rebuild after such a horrible and devastating attack. Despite his successes, Rudy made a few mistakes along the way, and those came back to haunt him. He was unable to parlay his victories into a successful campaign for president. Rudy did not want to accept defeat, but he knew that he was never going to be president either way. When Donald Trump was elected president, Rudy discovered a new way to chase fame. Being close to a president was the next best thing to being a president. It was a way to have one last shot at glory. In order to maintain a good relationship with Donald Trump, Rudy had to go along with all of the deception. It's not clear if Rudy really believed the lies, but he repeated them either way. Rudy not only lost his chance to ascend to a place of importance, he sacrificed what little credibility he had left. This is a familiar pattern for people who work with Donald Trump. He attracts people who are talented and have been very successful. Then he makes them commit to ridiculous schemes. Donald Trump burns up the credibility of those who work for him. In some ways, Rudy was just another victim of Donald Trump, but a victim who should have known better. Rudy was unable to see past the glare of his own desire for fame and power. Now moving to my final thoughts. Rudy Giuliani serves as a reminder to all people, successful and otherwise, that it is never too late to destroy one's reputation. A singular focus on power, glory, and fame is not healthy for anyone, including human-sized roosters. Those are my thoughts in the case of Rudy Giuliani. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be as intriguing as a machine gun wielding ferret chasing a man eating tiger. Thanks for watching.